Hello everyone. In this set of videos, we're going to begin our discussion of the union find data structure. In particular, this is going to be our data structure that is designed to understand disjoint sets of data. So you may have talked about in a previous class what a set is and a disjoint set just means that there is nothing in common between the various sets. We have a couple of operations like we've seen with all of the data structures we've, we've talked about in the past. Here we have the ability to make a set out of a single element, the ability to combine two sets, X and Y, where X and Y aren't necessarily sets, but they're elements in sets. So we're going to combine the set containing X and the set containing Y. We're going to have a, a function for determining if things are in the same set, and we're going to be able to, to find what set something is in. In a mathematical logic point of view, this is going to be something like an equivalence class and a representative from that equivalence class. What is a simple application of this? A simple application might be, if we have a graph, how do we tell what the connected components are and how can we tell if two vertices are in the same connected component? I have consciously drawn the graph up there in a way that makes it difficult to determine exactly which nodes are connected. So if you're looking at this and trying to determine what are the connected components, remember connected components are the subsets of the graph that are connected. So one way to determine this might be, say we started at a vertex V1 and we wanted to know every vertex connected to that vertex. One way that we did this in the past was with something like a depth first search and we would explore from that vertex to find out every place that was reachable from that vertex. So we might start exploring via the edges and find V9, we follow V9 up to V5, then we follow V5 over to V2. And then if we look, there's nowhere to go from V2. So all those green nodes correspond to one set of vertices that are in a single connected component. Now let's do the same thing for some other nodes. V12, for example, is in the same set as V3, is in the same set as V8, and then V8 has no other edges, so we are done there. Now let's look at another vertex, say V11 here. V11 is in the same set as V7, is in the same set as V6, is in the same set as V10, is in the same set as V4. So this is one way that we could determine what the connected components are. And once we've constructed this, we'll know in the future if we had stored all of the green nodes in a single set, all of the red nodes in a single set, and all of the blue nodes in a single set, we should hopefully be able to quickly determine whether or not those things are in the same connected component. This is a bit of a simple example, but it will suffice for motivating us through this problem. So let's look at some code for how we can do this. If we scroll down, what we're going to do is loop over every single vertex and make a set, and then we're gonna loop over every single edge and union together every single pair of vertices that share an edge. So how would this work? What we would have done actually is started with 12 distinct sets, one for each vertex in this graph. Then we would have iterated over every single edge, potentially in no rational order, and union together the sets whenever we found two that were in different sets. So we would slowly be building together these sets. And this is the way union find is going to work. We're gonna start by making every single element into its own set and then slowly combining those sets to form the proper disjoint sets for our, our application. Without me telling you the runtime, we can't really analyze this code, so that's why we don't really have it as a function. Um, but once we've made these sets, how do we determine if VI and VJ are connected? Well, we just need to determine, are they in the same set? If they are, we're going to return true, otherwise we return false. We can't necessarily analyze this code yet because we have not shown how we're going to implement any of these methods and we know nothing about the runtimes. But this is one way we could solve this problem in maybe a more obvious way than using depth first search, which is a bit more sophisticated graph algorithm than what we're talking about here. We will come back to this later and analyze the runtime once we understand the asymptotic complexity of make set and union for our data structure. One last thing to comment on is that in same set is very easy to code if we have find set as a functionality. If X and Y have the same representative for their set, then they're in the same set. Otherwise they aren't. Very straightforward method. So with this, we're going to move on to exploring how we implement this data structure now that we understand some of the logistics behind it.